In this step, we're going to be putting together the material for the window that has this emissive texture on it. And what that will do is make the window look like it's emitting light, like it's got a bit of a glow to it. Before we do that though, I won't leave you hanging in case you struggled with the last step, which was putting the material together for yourself. So we'll just have a look at how those come together just so you can see that for your own reference. So we've got the M underscore beam, M underscore chimney, M underscore door. And then over here, we've got M underscore slats and M underscore tiles. And I'll just show you how they go together just in case you're wondering. So we've got the slats one here. So you see you've got your three texture samples and they're all plugged into base color, roughness and normal. And I think the texture name for that is wood slats underscore and then whatever you want. Same for tiles. We've got three texture samples plugged into the appropriate place. And these are called roof tiles underscore whichever one you need. So in this case, it's D. For the chimney, however, it would appear that in the, the textures pack that I put in there, I didn't see the need for a separate roughness texture. So what I've done there is I've got the two texture samples and then I've used a constant expression to plug into the roughness. I'm given that 0 0.7, although I might change my mind later. For the door, three texture samples again. The texture samples are door underscore whichever letter. And the final one is beam. Again, three texture samples, beam underscore whatever. So that's all those, they're all saved. So I can close these for now. Get rid of tiles, chimney, door and beam. Okay, and now before we start putting all these materials onto the cabin, we need to make one final one, which is the window. So let's right click in our materials folder and make a new material. I'm gonna call this one window underscore M. And let's open that up. So this is gonna be very sim similar to the other texture. So we're gonna need four texture samples this time. One, two, three, and four. I might just have to zoom out a little bit just so I can see everything. Okay, so the first one's gonna be base color. Let's search for that. So we've got Windows D for that one. Okay, the next one I'm gonna do is roughness. So let's search for window again, and we're gonna do the roughness one. The third one, because I like to do them in order. So the next one down is gonna be emissive. So we'll put that one in next. So window, and you can see this one is the emissive. It's got an underscore E on it. So we'll use that. And what this texture does is tells um, the material which parts can glow and what color to have them glow as well. So that'll be really useful. And the final one, we're just gonna have our window normal. And then we need to connect these to the appropriate inputs on the main material node. So we need roughness here, emissive just there, and then normal. Okay, so now that's updated, what I want to do is change, because this view is not particularly useful to me, I'm gonna change this to this view here so I can see what's going on. And I want to be able to see this glowing. So at the moment, it doesn't really look like it's glowing. And that's because we need to make the strength of the emissive texture greater. So what I'm gonna to do to achieve that is use a multiply node. So to do that, I'm gonna hold M on my keyboard and just left click. And then what I'll do is I'll drag the output of this texture sample into A, and then the output of the multiplier is gonna go into emissive color, like that. So that's gonna work as kind of a, it will intersect the values from that and we now need to multiply them to make them stronger. So clicking on your multiply expression, you've got a constant B. Now I find that a number greater than 10 looks good. I think I'm gonna start with 16. I seem to remember I liked that one. So let's do 16 in there, press enter. And when this updates, you should see that emissive starting to happen. So you can see that now looks a lot brighter. So I kind of like that. Let's now go, let's go to 20, see if I like it any better. Yeah, I like that. So that, we will leave there. If you wanted to, instead of typing a number into constant B, you could put a scalar parameter into there and you could turn this into an instance material and you could control that kind of more dynamically in your level. But I'm not gonna do that in this one because we may come back and do some sexy effects to make this, this glow look like it's flickering, like there's a fire inside in a much later step when we're just doing the finishing touches. So I'm gonna leave it like this now so as not to confuse things later. But that's the window material made. So we've now got that kind of glow effect going on as well. So we'll save that. Okay, so we can close that window down now. And the final thing we'll do is in the static mesh editor, 
we're going to assign all of these. So we're going to put on the window one here. Window underscore M. You can see that now looks like it's doing its thing. We need the beam one to go here. Well, so I'm going to leave default material alone because I don't know what that is. We'll do the tiles one. That one there. Uh, the chimney. And is there one more or is that it? There's one more. We've got to do the door. Oh, there are two doors. Which is the right one? Yeah, that one's mine. Okay. So now you can have a look around this, see how it's looking. So very, very simple asset. But it's doing its thing. It's doing what we need it to do and I'm happy with it. So we've got um, the nice kind of brighter looking window. Um, and at the moment, that doesn't look like it's glowing so much. But when we put it into a darker level, because we're going to make this look kind of sunsetty, um, that will really show up really nicely. So make sure that you now save your cabin asset. And that makes sure that the changes that we've made to it will remain. And in the next step, we're going to actually get this cabin into our level somewhere. And we'll do a little bit of work on the landscape as well to make it look like it fits. So I'll see you in the next video for all of that goodness. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.